Good morning. Grab your Bibles with me and let's go to the book of Amen. Matthew chapter 27, verse 46, and it reads, At about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Today I want to continue with part four of the seven last sayings of the cross. Just to recap on part three, it was focused on Jesus' concern for his mother after he returned to the Father in the Spirit. So he left her in the care of a trusted friend, one of his disciples. Today, part four is focused on a moment on the cross when it all hit Jesus. He felt that God had forsaken him after all he had done for the people and all the sacrifices and miracles and casting out demons and raising of the dead. They turned against him, bared false witness. And Jesus felt like God has done the same in that moment. Doubt set in for a moment. This is why the words rang out, Father, Father, why have thou forsaken me? It was a moment of weakness for Christ. Today's text, which, which can be found in Matthew and cross reference in Mark, reminds us of a time when Jesus felt weak and lost, as if God had abandoned him and allowed his enemies to consume him. At times we feel the same. We ask the same question to God. Why have you forsaken me? Why have you allowed my enemies to consume me? After everything I've done, preached, prayed, prophesied, and shared the gospel in your name, yet you, I feel you turn against me. I put my faith in you, God, and yet you didn't show up when I needed you. I trusted you to heal me, and yet you didn't heal me. I trust you to save my unsaved loved one. And you didn't save him. I trusted you to deliver God. That person who was addicted and lost in sin. But you didn't God. And so we feel this way. Amen somebody. As Christ felt. But Christ was the first partaker. Of feeling that doubt on Calvary. The reality is God hasn't left us. And no our enemies haven't consumed us. It is just the flesh that sits in. And that is what happened with Jesus. He let the flesh get in the way of the spirit. And that's what happens with us. Amen. We allow the flesh to override the spirit. We allow the flesh to get our mind so messed up that we forget that God is able. But Jesus, in that moment of Calvary, felt the same. Felt like his enemies had won. Felt like that after everything he did, it was all a waste of his time. We go back to this feeling when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. He prayed, Father, if it's your will, let this cup pass me by. But if not my will, but your will be done. And then we see the conclusion of that feeling on Calvary here. We see that that, that Jesus felt so abandoned by the Father that he called out. And the crazy thing is, those who were watching him, those who were his enemies, did not realize what he was saying. They thought he was calling on Elijah. They thought he was calling on one of the prophets, but he wasn't. They thought he was calling Isaiah. He wasn't. He was simply... Telling the father, why have you done this, father? I feel you've left me. You allow them. Father, father, why have you forsaken me? And today we feel like that. But it's not true. God has not forsaken us. God has not left us. He has not abandoned us. And Jesus realized that. There was a time before the death of Christ. Before he finally gave up the ghost, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit. That he realized the father had it forsaken him. But there was a greater plan in place. And today you and I and everyone who would believe is a part of that greater plan. So today if you are not saved, the doors of the church is open. This can be your day to receive the salvation of the Lord. All you have to do is repent of your sin. Because God does love you. He cares for you. He desires the best for you. This is your day. Don't wait till it's too late. Don't wait till tomorrow. 
Sin only brings destruction. Sin has no time limit of, of expiration. A man or woman could be committed in sin. It could be the end. And that's it. It is too late. So today can be your day. Let us bow our heads in a word of prayer. Father, in Jesus' name. Father, we repent of our sin. We confess our sin. God, we confess that we're sinners. And we need your grace and your mercy. We ask you into our heart, Father, to be our God and we'll be your child. We know this flesh, God, is nothing but terrible. The flesh will get us to believe God anything. But we realize in the name of Jesus that God, you are still able. You can do the impossible. When it looked like everything, God, is said and done, you're able to do it. When it looked like our backs are against the wall, God, you're able to do it. And we thank you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.